This is the Prusa Mini, and this is my review so far. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Find your creativity at the link in the description or stick around to the end to find out more. The Prusa Mini started out as a mystery big thing Joe teased on Twitter, saying it would be coming to the East Coast Rep Rap Festival back in uh, 2019. I and many others got to see it for the very first time. I even got to chat with Joe about it in a first look video from the festival floor back on October 16th, 2019. As you can see, it's a cantilever design with an 18 cm cubed or seven inch cubed print volume. The new buddy board is 32 bit and outfitted with a Trinamic 2209 silent stepper driver. The Bowden system is three to one geared and it'll take 1.75 millimeter filament all the way to the hot end with an E3D compatible thread for a 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle. A probe provides mesh bed leveling similar to the Mark III line, but unlike the Mark III, it uses a USB stick instead of an SD card for media. And the screen up front is a 2.8 inch 65,000 color display with G-code preview. It has an ethernet port, Wi-Fi is an optional upgrade, and a farm mode for the machine is a software upgrade coming at, at a later date. It's not here yet, maybe soon, I don't know. The Mini was printing at the show, and the prints looked good. The price of 349 US was less than half that of a Mark III, which made it quite an attractive machine to get. In fact, Joe Kasha, you know him as 3D Maker Noob, he was at the Prusa booth as this machine was announced, and he put his order in straight away. Like legit, he may have been one of the first in the world. I love that dude. I also ordered mine, but much, much later. In fact, when Prusa approached me to do the review, and I accepted, my review unit arrived one week before the unit I purchased arrived. The Mini is such a popular machine, the lead times have been massive. In fact, as of recording this video right here, the Prusa Mini has an eight week lead time. It's a long time. When I had both in hand, the only right thing to do was assemble them both on a live stream and have my daughter Sydney help out. We each assembled a Prusa Mini, and then at the end, she tested and smashed the Prusa Whistle print. There it is. Oh! And there you go. Oh. Before those machines came home with me, I tried printing something at the office. I was using the textured plate, and I couldn't get PLA to stick to it reliably. I ended up switching to the smooth PEI sheet and was able to get a print to stick. It was the phone holder. It was the one that I tweeted out and lots and lots and lots of people loved. I was even able to print the Sunshine Engine Benchmark. It's a small three cylinder print in place engine and it's awesome and it works too. I can spin the crankshaft and parts move. It's great and it's free to download. If you wanna try it yourself, link is down there. I got a Prusa Buddy Model 2, even posed on my car for an outdoor photo when the sun was shining here in the Pacific Northwest. When the machines got home, I got right down to printing. I printed the Fotis Mint birthday cake. Remember that? It turned out fantastic. After that was done though, I, I had to print the Matt Stoltz handle for the machine. Works great. <laughs> Playing with fire there. I printed some typical test models, of course. I printed a Mini Joel. Look at that. This is Spider Maker filament on the Prusa Mini. I'd say it looks pretty good. The Joel crotch, mini Joel crotch, looks good. I like the features and how well they printed. I know that there is some slight layer inconsistencies, but this filament wasn't calibrated. Still though, when I'm holding this in my hand and looking at it, I look at it and I go, that's a good mini Joel. This chain mail right here, this is by Flowalistic. This is just the sample. You can print it larger on a larger machine. In fact, I did that on my rail core review. But for the Prusa Mini, I just kept with the sample. And it printed great. This is in that Spider Maker filament. It's amazing to watch it print because it's, it's just so many small moves that end up making an incredibly cool looking functional model. I really, really like this. This, this is cool. The clock spring print in place box looks great. Eh. And it was also printed in Spider Maker PLA as well. This Benchy, right there, was printed in Extruder Green Tech Pro. It looks great. It was a easy print. 
The story behind this extruder filament is I was at Formnext last year and it was handed to me. And I thought, well, shoot, I don't know if it's gonna print well after taking so long to use, but it sure printed great. Look at that. The bow of the boat is incredible, to say the least. I'm really happy with that. I would not kick that out of bed for eating crackers. That is for darn sure. You can tell that the slight bridge across on the back circle window right there, it looks okay. That one, well, that's an issue, but that is not the end of the world. Two clips with some snippers and that's gone. I think that it does have some issues and it showcases a filament that has not yet been calibrated. But at the same time, I've seen a lot worse benchies and in person, up close, I'm satisfied with the quality. I could give this to a child and a child would adore it. Test prints are great, you know that. But can the Mini withstand a production environment? Is this a machine suitable for a print farm? Well, I wanted to find out. So I set out to print the parts for the Alexander Chappelle camera arm. <laughs> Everything you see here 3D printed on the Prusa Mini. All pieces here are printed in PLA filaments. Uh, let's see, some are, some are Prusament. This was printed using the Prusa Slicer default profiles for Prusament and honestly, I'm not mad. I think it looks incredible. Plus, this is that Prusament, I think it's like a, a galaxy filament. So it has those sparkles in it, which makes it look even better. I know that there are little bits of lines you can see when the lights shine uh, a certain way, but at the same time, this, this is a fantastic piece. Summer printed solids, Jesse PLA. Honestly, I want you to look at that. This is the printed solid filament and I printed it with Prusament slicer settings and it came out incredible. Look at this. This is the part of that camera arm that's gonna hold the camera and uh, you can see a little bit of a uh, little bit of echoes in there, a little bit of ringing or reverberation. But I think I'm not too worried about that. This consumed nearly the full Z of the print, and I am excited at the quality that this was. Oh man! Even Creality filament. This is a tale of two Creality filaments. You can see that there's two different filament colors here, two different quality levels. This is the filament that was included with the CR6 SE and I love it to pieces. It performed incredibly well and it looks really good. This filament right here, this is from a box that uh, was labeled Ender 3 and it's just a, a random bit of filament that Creality sent me when I was doing PPE printing. It didn't work so well on the Mini and honestly, if Creality is gonna send me more filament, I want this stuff, it's good. Printing all these parts did test the filament run out sensor as well, and it worked. When a spool would run out and I had to put a new filament, this is printed solid filament, this is printed solid filament, they're both the same, but even though they're different colors, that line there, that line there is perfect. Everything is smooth and the transition went incredibly well. Really happy with how the Prusa Mini could handle it. And if we go around the circumference of this piece, we can see that there's no skips. Everything worked the way it was supposed to. And this is not just a quality piece, but a incredibly good looking one as well. The quality of these parts is wonderful. Some were printed by themselves. Others were printed in multiples. This one does have a bit of stringing, but it's nothing that I can't just scrape off easily. Honestly, not worried about this. I did encounter some failures and one of them, I just couldn't get mad at. I mean, Look at it, glorious. There is also a rattle during certain moves in one of the machines. Uh, it'll take some investigation to narrow it down. Could be a bearing, could be in the extruder part, maybe something's just slightly loose. Little scratching cap. The cooling fan spinning up made a noise like a bearing was going out on this one right here. I'm gonna see if it's covered under warranty, and if not, it's a, it's, it's a fan, it's not that expensive to replace. 
Uh, this machine right here, it halted from a bad bed thermistor. And boy, howdy, does this machine make a loud noise when that happens. I verified by pushing on the bed where the wires connect, and I could see the display show minus 15, which indicates a break in the wire. A new thermistor at Printed Solid is $7. So I can just buy that, or I can go steal the one from my Mark II, which I'm just not using at the time. Also, for some reason, it won't read this USB stick anymore. My computer sees it fine, but the machine won't read it. I don't know what's going on. So far, this has been my personal experience with the Prusa Mini. I've got a lot more filaments and prints planned for these machines, but right now, this is where I stand. I think it's fair to say that even though I've encountered some problems, they've been fairly minor. I think it's also fair to say that the prints from the Prusa Mini so far look absolutely beautiful, and it's done a bang up job. You all, using the Prusa Mini is an absolute joy. I think 349 US is a great price considering what you get, what you have access to, and just how well it works. I like the ecosystem it is a part of and the Prusa Slicer profiles work incredibly well with various filament manufacturers. No machine is perfect, but for my needs, the Prusa Mini is incredibly close. If you're doing your research and you're going to find other opinions as well, Good job. I know Tom Sandlatterer, Caleb over at Make, and Uncle Jesse have videos on the Prusa Mini, and I'm gonna link them in the description below. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people, such as yourselves, on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and much, much more. <laughs> I'm always gonna hype video, of course. It's a fantastic place to get lost in creativity and deepen existing passions by exploring new skills. Plus, classes in drawing, writing, journaling. They can all be a great way to manage stress and help practice good mindfulness. Don't forget. I have to mention a class by Chris Burkhardt called Outdoor Photography, Shooting at Sunset, Sunrise, and Night. For me, I love taking photos at sunset and at night. And, and Chris takes us through a night at Joshua Tree National Park. The beauty of this class is we get to see the workflow Chris employs, from camera settings and lenses, how he composes shots, and even to <laughs> editing photos in Adobe Lightroom on his MacBook in a van. Well, I don't think editing in a van is a requirement. It sure lends a bit more authenticity to it all, and maybe I'll have to give that a try someday. Just gotta acquire that van. You can find this class and many, many, many more over at Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. And that's a good deal right there. Hey, a big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode and we'll have you right back to it. Well, shoot, if you've made it this far, you're awesome. Uh, agree or disagree, I'd love to hear your comments down below. This was my review so far of the Prusa Mini. One was purchased with my own money and the other was sent to me for review. Prusa did not get to see this before it was published, so you're seeing it at the same time as him and his company. Thanks for watching, and if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and as always, from a safe distance, high five. Gone forever. Look at that though. I mean, <laughs> there's the thumbnail. Wait, let's see. There's the thumbnail right there. <laughs>